today is Resurrection Sunday. On Easter Day, we remember the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we want to fitly celebrate his resurrection and him coming into our life for our resurrection. And also we look forward when whole groaning creation will be resurrected. That's the gamut of resurrection glory. Of course, we are in the midst of the ravages of the coronavirus, but yet we look to the author and the perfecter of our faith, the Lord Jesus Christ. So shall we uh, pray together as we prepare during this gloom and during this valley, we yet want to see Christ risen. And we want to sing with Charles Wesley, Christ the Lord is risen today. Ha, 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 hallelujah. He has burst the gates of Hades that we may live a life pleasing to him. So Lord Jesus, we come again, though in the midst of the heavy oppression of the coronavirus, we in the nations and we in our nation, Sri Lanka, and we in our assembly, in our fellowship, want to join our hearts together with all believers everywhere in Sri Lanka and beyond to receive resurrection glory, receive resurrection healing, receive resurrection redirection. Even at this difficult time, help us, O Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. So to get our eyes above the present difficulty, though we are going through the difficulty, I want to take you to the epistle to the Hebrews. You may not know. Uh, when Darwin fell, Charles Darwin, that's right, the, the theory of evolution person, when he fell ill finally, and he was languishing, a certain Christian lady went to see him. And he said, I regret the theories I spewed when I was younger. And she said, what are you reading? He said, I'm reading from the Bible, the royal epistle, the letter to the Hebrews. So we are going to look at the letter to the Hebrews. Hebrews chapter nine, verse 28. So Christ also having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time for salvation without reference to sin to those who eagerly wait for him. So we have uh, gone through our Good Friday covenant and we are now arriving on the other side of the grave without reference to sin. We are the salvation that the Lord has promised to those who eagerly await him. So we have eagerly awaited for this salvation resurrection glory and this is the vision I saw the cross became a stylus that's right the cross became a stylus you know uh, all writing print the cross imagine the shape of the cross writing and the good the bad the ugly of my past life imagine they were like papyrus willows you know out of which the paper was made the good the bad the ugly was put together and under God's hammer, it was flattened. Judgment pronounced and redemption received because that hammer came on our Lord Jesus Christ. And that hammer flattened my good, the bad, the ugly of my old life. And then came regeneration. Then came recreation. And a brand new scroll, spot and wrinkle passed away. <clears throat> the, uh, the bad, the ugly, and my self-righteous good all obliterated into this new scroll. And he took the stylus that came from the cross and he off offered the ink of his resurrected life, that's right, and to write his story into my history, into the world's history. And this stylus is not merely the work of the cross, but it is also, I am saying, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. For the life I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Galatians 2, 20. Understood the stylus, work of his cross. Me agreeing that all I am, all that I have is crucified and I am risen with Christ. That's the message, isn't it? Christ crucified and Christ resurrected becomes a stylus that writes the story. 
That's the vision for Resurrection Sunday. Now, we want to uh, take it stage by stage. So, continuing Hebrews 10, here it is, uh, into Hebrews 10, verse 2. In those sacrifices, there's a reminder of sins year by year. But when we have received Jesus Christ into our life, make it sure, is the sense of sin gone? Reference to sin gone? Judgment gone out of our mouth, taking up the sins of other people. And we are praying, Father, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. These are the signs of the resurrection in my life. Memory of my sin, desire for my sin, inclination to my sin, the old bondages of sin, self-condemnation of sin gone. Two, the, my reference to other people's sins and ind indictment and you owe me the Shylock nature gone. You understand? All gone. No reference to sin again and no reminder. Of course, we take communion to celebrate sins washed off, written off, debt written off. What a moratorium. Everybody everywhere will be hoping at this time, nations will be saying, would to God the international uh, monetary lending agencies do a debt moratorium for our uh, debts that we have suffered in our nation for the difficult economic times. And everyone who's on a lease, who's on a debt bond, who has taken a loan, uh, is hoping that banks will write off all these debts, not just put off, but write off. And Jesus Christ, the Son of God, did that for us. All our bad debts, the extracting the pound of nature from others, written off. So in this time when all our external pride and glory is gone and we are left with ourselves, isn't it? And our spouse and our children, the great table is not before us, the commandering voice is not there. I'm, I'm hoping that you are not back to a hectic schedule of work. Of course, work from home. But keep your family prayer time. Keep your family time. You are truly great when your family thinks you are great. And the Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross to make a family for God. Born of God to belong to God. That's, we belong to him also. We are born of him to belong to him. To, we know him to make him known. And we are begotten of him to beget others, birth others into Christ. Threefold commission, mission, as we receive resurrection life of Christ. So what else will this resurrection do for us? For it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sin. Therefore, when he comes into the world, he says, this is a quotation from Psalm 40, and it's a quotation about Jesus Christ coming into the world. Now, you know, he was the firstborn of the creation because the creation came from him. That is Colossians 1, 15 and 16. That's at the very beginning. Then he became the firstborn, uh, the one who was firstborn, who took human body and came. In that sense also, he became firstborn. God's firstborn in that sense. Then he became firstborn when he arose from the dead, firstborn among the dead. Fourthly, when, he, uh, uh, when people believed on him, he became firstborn among brethren. So that is Romans 8, uh, 28, 29, firstborn among brethren. And then when he, when the church was formed, it was called the church of the firstborn, redeemed by his love. Hebrews 12, 24, 25, 26. So this is a story about the firstborn. So he took a body. I come, here it is, uh, he, uh, Hebrews 10, 5, sacrifice and offering you have not uh, uh, desired, but a body you have prepared for me. So what is this body? One, that little baby in the manger. We did this and he was in this manger and there were those cracks, three of them under the manger. Even at the birth, there were three crosses like shapes holding up the manger. Yes, that's right. And at Calvary, there were three crosses, Lord in the middle, two thieves on the other side, one got saved. So the body, the human body, Secondly, he arose in a glorified body. That body could go through doors 
it could be touched at the same time. That body, if he wanted, he could eat also. The glorified body after resurrection. Thirdly, he also received the body of the corporate body of the church. Jesus Christ, the head, and we are the corporate body of the church, you see. So, so not only our sin was taken away, so no mem firstly, no memory of our sin. Two, no memory of other people's sin. That's resurrection life. Thirdly, we belong again in a new body, in a new family. We can't forget this. So we pray our Father which art in, we pray our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. We are thinking about the corporate body. Especially at this time, we, are, we think of our brethren who do not have to eat and we share with a neighbor, with another one in our church family. We ask and share as much as we can. So coronavirus is teaching us Christianity the way it should be lived, isn't it? Yes. Even on a great resurrection day, though we are not physically together, in the spirit we are together and from our homes in a little while we'll be doing the communion service and also we are increasing our family prayer time, correct? I have always preached on this 7 p.m. is happy, holy harvest hour for the whole family. Please keep a limit on the time you spend on the television or on your iPad or tab or whatever laptop or smartphone, whatever. Please give a little more time to be with each other. That's right. Why do we do this? Not for competition, but to hold our nation up to God and to hold our call up to God. So you remember the original stylus? The cross made the stylus and the cross comes into us. All my talent, all my future, all my ambition, crucified. It is no longer I that lives, but Christ who lives in me. And, and for me to die is gain and to live is Christ. Philippians 1 25 that's the stylus that writes the scroll next stage when the corona curtain goes up what will the world be like and there would be a lot of new scrolls written up for God's people to leave it out there in the work field in the neighborhood wherever we are and we remember 2 Corinthians 5 uh, if any man be in Christ Jesus he's a new creation because creation life of Jesus Christ has come to us. All things have passed away. All things are becoming new. And to those who are just gathering the first ropes, give them a little time, all things are becoming new. And every husband turned to the wife and say, now I, I told you so, all things are becoming new. That's right. Uh, so this is the experience we have. So third thing, we are baptized into one family and this body of Christians will rise together when Jesus comes. That's what he said in Hebrews 9, 28. So Christ also having been offered once to bear the sins of many will appear a second time for salvation without reference to sin to those who eagerly await him. So salvation, we were one, we were saved from the condemnation, judgment, punishment due to our old sin. Salvation in the past tense. At present, we are being saved out of our old nature. Praise God. We are crucified with Christ de jure, de facto. We are working it out in daily life. And in the future, in time to come, we will be saved out of this world's sinful nature also. <clears throat> so we have that hope as well. Excuse me. Uh, so Hebrews 10, 6, whole burnt offering and sacrifices for sin, you have taken no pleasure. The Old Testament sacrifices of animals dying, howling, crying, unwillingly they die, that was only a stopgap arrangement for us to understand our own sin and to look to God and say, Calvary is coming. A perfect lamb of God is coming. That's what every sacrifice said. Uh, that's what every sacrifice said. Perfect lamb of God is coming. So we remembered the Paschal lamb on the Good Friday, the eternal lamb of God who came for us. Uh, then on the cross, he on Good Friday we may remember more, quite, quite, 
quite rightly that he was the sin offering that took our sin. He was the peace offering, propitiation, that made peace between God and man. And he was the trespass offering that made restitution, the offering of restitution, hmm? restitution, restoration offering. But on Resurrection Sunday, such as today, we particularly remember he was the whole burnt offering. Let all my life, let my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, in the, my entire life. And Charles Wesley's great hymn, his quickening eye, diffused a ray of light, my dungeon flamed with light, my chains fell off, I arose free. I paraphrased his words. You remember his words, isn't it? Great song, great song. Yes. How can it be that I should gain an interest in the Savior's blood, the immortal dies? He was God incarnate, but he died. So, and now we are on the resurrection side of the story. Uh, so we, uh, so we are, so you remember, uh, we have no memory of our sin gone and no keeping grudges against us, their sin gone. Now we belong into one family and now we are looking to the hope of the entire body of Christ being translated to glory. You see, verse 7, Hebrews 10, 7, then I said, Behold, I have come in the scroll of the book. It is written of me to do your will, O God. So saying Christ came. Remember the scroll. So saying Christ came. And having done, it is finished. And he ascended to the right hand of the Father. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. And now I want, you to, I want to give you a snapshot view of what it was when he entered heaven. Have you thought of it like that? Book of Revelation, chapter, Book of Revelation, chapter 4. And there is a symbolic entry into heaven of Christ himself. When John the Apostle, last surviving apostle, you know the context of Revelation chapter 4, after these things I looked and behold a door standing open in heaven and the first voice which I had heard like the sound of a trumpet speaking with me said, come up here and I will show you what must take place after these things. So it is interesting after these things. Certainly after these things could be at the end of the church age. Also, after these things could be, John is just introduced to the glory scene retrospectively. Now, John is in AD 96, but he's shown what happened in AD 33. Some archaeologists, historians say it was AD 33, April 3rd that he was crucified, which means it would be April 5th, AD 33, that he resurrected and he ascended to the Father. You remember early morning, he told Mary of Magdala, faithful lady who waited, whereas the disciples went off, but she waited. Disciples saw the empty tomb and went off. But Mary of Magdala waited to see the risen Lord and her faith was rewarded. A lady, a lady. Shall we give a hand clap for all ladies everywhere who have ever followed Christ, given their heart to Jesus and served them lifelong. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Praise his holy name. No wonder in Psalm 68, verse 11, it captures the story. Great was the Saba. It's a feminine gender word. Great was the company feminine gender that proclaim the gospel. So much ladies have also, sisters have been also so involved in laying down their life for the Lord, isn't it? So here we are at Revelation chapter 4. I'm capturing for you the possibility that John, he was given a bird's eye view or a view in retrospect. He was just shown what happened in heaven in AD 33 when after his resurrection, he ascended. He told Mary, don't touch me. I have not yet ascended to my father and your father. Immediately the relationship have changed because the cross was done, intercession was done. God the Father was the father of our Lord Jesus Christ as much as the father of Mary of Magdala. 
That's the power of the resurrection. All sin gone. Praise God. We get his nature. Thank you. Not only sin erase, punishment no more, but he, we get his nature. Praise God. Uh, John 10, 17, I lay down my life, but I am coming to take that life of mine in you. We shall be said, thank you. I'm willing, I'm willing, I'm willing in all my talent, in all my ability, all my days, all my strength. Lord Jesus, take up your life. But here we are on the threshold of heaven. I'm suggesting to you the, uh, that the, the heavens open and John saw the scene of the victorious Christ ascent and throne is all ready and waiting and there is this scroll waiting say it me scroll is waiting you remember the scroll with which Jesus came on earth scroll is waiting he was sitting and God is on his throne Revelation chapter 4 immediately I saw in the spirit and behold a throne was standing in heaven and one sitting on the throne and what are they waiting for the rainbow, glorious rainbow all around. It's still a green emerald rainbow, but it is going to be overtaken by the color of sardius because judgment will soon begin. So Revelation 4, 3 has, he who was sitting was like a jasper stone and a sardius in appearance. There was a rainbow around the throne like an emerald in appearance. Grace is still available, but sardius will come through at a certain point of time. And when we get to Revelation 15, we find in front of the throne a lot of fire. Yes, judgment had become. Judgment is being executed. But this is at the beginning of the story of resurrection ascended, the Lamb of God. And verse 5, out from the throne come flashes of lightning and sounds and peals of thunder. That's how the throne is and the spirit of son, full spirit of God is there. And the question is being asked. We are not going through the whole. And the heaven is reverberating. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God, the Almighty, who was, who is, and was to come. Oh, and verse 11, worthy are you, all, oh, our Lord, and our God to receive glory and honor and power. That's the unending angelic song. But a change is coming. Chapter 5, I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll, a book written, inside and so on the back, sealed up with seven seals. What is this scroll? With a scroll written, Jesus Christ came on earth and lived the one and only perfect life. And he said, it is finished. And he has gone back. And now a scroll is waiting ready in heaven. No one in heaven or on the earth or under the earth was able to open the book or to look into it. Then I, that is John, in the vision began to weep greatly because no one was found worthy to open the book. Verse 5, and one of the elders said to me, Stop weeping. Behold, the lion that is from the tribe of Judah, the root of David has overcome so as to open the book and its seven seals. And I saw after resurrection in ascension glory. I saw between the throne with the four living creatures and two elders, a lamb standing as if slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him who sat on the throne. When he had taken the book, the four living creatures, they started worship. So Jesus Christ received the new covenant uh, promises, new covenant authority, and the scroll, how the new covenant will work out in all all the earth and they are open stage by stage certainly judgments are there but also great redemption great redemption from every tribe and tongue and nation a people prepared for God as a royal priesthood for God ruling their nations are going to arise because of this scroll that he took to give to us the authority one by one worthy are you to take the book and to break its seals Revelation 6 9 for you were slain and purchased for God with your blood. Men from every tribe and tongue and people and nation, you have made them to be a kingdom and priest to our God. They will reign upon the earth. That is our calling. Okay. And here, here, the, here is a story <clears throat> a little towards the end, 
but it's a prediction, a prophecy of what's going to be. Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels, thousands, myriads, saying with a loud voice, 512 Revelation, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain to receive power and riches, wisdom, might and honor, glory and blessing in every nation. In US with President Trump having many battles. In UK with the Prime Minister just coming out of ICU. And Germany where many of our friends are. Germany is going to have a better future as a sovereign nation. This is our prayer, Germany and Italy recovering, recovering and kneeling before the Lord Jesus Christ. And Spain saying, oh Lord, save us, oh Lord, save us. And Sri Lanka, our little nation, becoming sweet incense once again, just the way cinnamon went into Solomon's temple. Whole of Sri Lanka is going to become a living aroma for our Lord Jesus Christ. And Australia with a prime minister so Christian like that. God bless Australia. And Malaysia rising in the voice of God, rising in the victory of God. Oh, God bless Switzerland. Yes, unto you who believe Jesus Christ is precious. Yes, just to the tune of Edelweiss. Oh, Switzerland, you will live, you will live, you will live. To him, so here is the conclusion of the throne scene and every created thing to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, the blessing and honor and glory and dominion forever and ever. I'm suggesting to you so all the tribes and tongues and nations will have a redeemed company going up to him. So this can be the prophecy of the inauguration and a preview of the culmination. I repeat, Revelation chapter 5 can be the prophecy of, can be the, uh, can, can be the ascension, resurrection, ascension uh, beginning and looking forward to the uh, prophecy of what the culmination is going to be from every tribe and tongue, a redeemed company. Now, finally, we have to look at the struggle from Revelation 8. These are, we saw the prospect of sin being dealt with. We saw the promise and the glory. Now we are going to see the present struggle. Three Ps. Romans 8. So we must not be discouraged. We are not very fair to live only in the prophecy. There is a present and there is a promise. And here is the present, Revelation chapter 8. So we understand coronavirus in the context of God's grand plan. R Romans 8, 26. Now don't say, oh, we know that. Now we have gone through those two stages to come here. Romans 8, 26. In the same way, the Spirit also helps our weaknesses. So on Resurrection Sunday, we take strength from the Spirit of God. Don't we know we have our weaknesses? Yes. For we do not know how to pray as we should, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. So we know the Comforter, Paracletus, one who acts on our behalf, has given us Sabbath time to get on and weaknesses to be turned into strength. First application in this time, uh, the, the Holy Spirit groans, helps, intercedes, picks up to make strength out of the weak places. So bring some weak places, husband and wife together, dad and parent, children together, parents and children together. Bring your weaknesses together. Speak to one another. Do some honest confession. If not at this time, even tonight, when you get down again for family prayer, family prayer three times a day is possible now. Dad is at home, working from home, yes. The Spirit himself intercedes for us with groaning, too deep for words. And he who searches the heart, so he's searching now, so say, search me, O God, and know my heart today. Try me, O Savior. What the mind of the Spirit is because he intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. So when he's searching the heart, he's not searching for our uh, dirty ways or nooks and places, corners filled with dirt. He's searching the heart to give the mind of the Spirit and to do an operation while he searches our heart and to he puts the mind of the spirit into that carnality of us, into that lust of the flesh, into that pride of life, into that lust of the eye, the things that were they are battling in us. The Holy Spirit is putting the mind of the spirit 
And when we end a prayer time, we find quite a bit of the mind of the Spirit has come over our habits, come over our decisions, come over our dislikes. Yes, we have been changed. 28, and we know that the God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God. So now, and those who are called according to His purpose. So this is the time to love, renew our love for God and get back to his purposes while we are closeted, shut down, locked down because of this horrible coronavirus. God is working out his purposes in our nation, in our neighbors, in our relatives, in people whom we have prayed for a long time. Application number three, God working those purposes while he is working in our heart. You remember the vision we had a few days ago? Circumcise your heart, that is your curriculum. I will prune the nation out there, says the Lord. Yes. And we know that God causes. 29, for those whom knew, predestined to become conformed to the image of his son, he would be the firstborn among many brethren. So, if you have been a little detached from the church family, not being a, va va a valuable, valid, identified member in the body, time to get your fit. Enough of isolation, lone range ways, no. Your first priority is in the purpose of God. Seek his kingdom first. You can see the pride and labor of much work. What will you decide? Of course we have to work, but we are getting back, get back to the ancient paths. You remember that old song, isn't it? We are getting back. We are getting it right. Getting the will of God, getting the purpose of God back to our life. So that we are now among the brethren. First, Jesus Christ is the firstborn among brethren. Came out of resurrection, came out of death. The first brother, so to say, our elder brother. And now we are in one family with him. Now his purposes to do together as a family is what this time is helping us to get ready. When work began, don't go your several ways. Remember, he's the firstborn among the brotherhood, the fraternity, which is called the Church of Jesus Christ. And you are planted in a local body. Be faithful. Pray globally, think globally, but act locally. That's right. Be faithful in one place. And these whom he predestined, he also called. And these whom he called, he also justified. Whom he justified, he glorified. So we are awaiting that glorification that is coming. We have a promise. Nothing can work against us. Uh, because of God's elect. Who will bring a charge against God's elect? You remember, these days will be shortened. Corona will be stopped because of God's elect. Matthew 24, 22, because of God's elect, yes. Yes, this is, and we are victorious in 37. In all these things, we overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us. Just one more scripture, the groaning, the groaning, uh, Romans 8, 22. For we know the whole creation groans with coronavirus and suffers the pains of childbirth together until now. So, God has allowed the season, sin has ceased, nature is resting, sin dens are shut up, human trafficking stopped, pedophilia stopped, many dens of vice, flesh trade cut down, evil entertainment that takes the heart of man, gambling cut down. When the curtain opens, will all this research, or will there be a renewed scroll God has prepared for his children in every nation to rise and live. His Daniel, his Joseph, yes. This is the hour for the resurrection life. So the groaning is there. We don't deny it. Not only this, but also we ourselves. Romans 8, 23. Having the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting eagerly for our adoption as sons, the redemption of our body for in hope we have been saved. So we live, you remember Hebrews 9, 28, the salvation that is being worked out. Once for all, we receive the Lord Jesus Christ into our life. Now we are waiting for his appearing. In the middle of it is the groaning, but this groaning is going to produce the glory of God.
see his glory see his glory see his glory come down praise his name jesus reign see his glory come down see his glory come down so please hold your hands family in prayer father lead in the communion time and our facilitator will also help you need so we have applied the scripture remember the groaning now but also look at Revelation 4 and 5 and remember the scroll and what Christ has already done. God bless you this Resurrection Remembrance Day.